Hello everyone, teacher Leela here, and today we are going to have a chat about how your voice can make a big impact on student learning experience. Let's look at an example. Let's listen to the poem, Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Did anyone enjoy that poem? Definitely not. Let's try again. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Was that better and more enjoyable? I would say so. As you can see, the tone of voice you use can make all the difference in the world to engage students and hold their attention. There are a few speaking techniques that you can use to allow students to become more involved in the lesson and hold their attention well. Speed, tone, and complexity of words. First, we will talk about speed. When teaching second language learners, it is imperative that you do not speak too quickly. If you have ever learned a second language yourself, you probably remember asking for speakers to slow down or to repeat something more than once. If you have never learned a second language, think about learning a difficult concept like astrophysics. You would need the teacher to speak slowly and repeat often. The same is true with second language acquisition. For young beginner students, you will want to speak much slower than you normally would and repeat directions often. An example of a good speed would be, hello students, my name is teacher Leela. As students progress to an intermediate level, you can speed up a bit. This would be a good speed for intermediate learners. For more advanced learners, you can speak at normal speed, but still be careful not to speak too quickly. Students who are following directions without issue would be a good indicator that your speed is appropriate for their level. Secondly, we will mention tone. As demonstrated in the poem Jack and Jill, your tone is very important. At ALO 7, we want our students to be engaged and have a fun time in their lessons. Your tone can make or break the lesson experience. No one enjoys being bored. Your tone is so important because it can change the experience for the entire class. Sometimes teaching can be a little bit like acting. You can practice in the mirror using different tones while reading poems or short stories. Your voice should go up when asking questions. How are you? Your voice should flux and go down at the end of a statement. I'm fine. You can really make the class interesting by using different voices for the characters. You can also show emotions with your voice in teaching language structure and vocabulary words. Tone goes hand in hand with TPR and using props. The tone, emotion, and TPR used all help students to build a meaningful connection to words and phrases and in turn creates a long-lasting memory. Research has shown that repetition and instruction alone do not create this type of long-term connection in language learning. Lastly, let's look at complexity in word choice. Think back to our example about learning astrophysics. Which sentence do you better understand? Astronomy is the scientific study of matter and phenomena in the universe, especially in outer space, including the positions, dimensions, distribution, motion, composition, energy, and evolution of celestial objects. Thank you, freedictionary.com. Or how about this? Astronomy is the study of stars, planets, and other objects in outer space. Thank you, learnersdictionary.com. I think that everyone who is not familiar with astrophysics, just like English learners are not familiar with English, would agree that the second definition is much more easily understood. The same is true with the words that we choose in our lessons. Keep it simple. Directions should not use complicated words or be lengthy. If students do not seem to understand, try again using simpler words or see if another student can provide an example for the struggling student. Let's look at a few examples pretending that we want the students to repeat some new words. I will say the new vocabulary words first and then I want you to repeat them after me. Or we could simplify those directions by saying, I say, you say. 
The second example uses much less complex language and is shorter, making it easier to follow and remember. For maximum effect, you should also use TPR with directions when possible. So to recap, we should use a lively tone of voice, incorporating TPR when possible, and choose simple words. Let's put it all together with our poem, Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Thanks, I hope everyone finds these tips helpful. What's your best tip for an engaging classroom? I would love to hear all about it.